It, this is the run for the 97, which is... In memory of the 97 who died at Hillsborough, but it also raises funds for good causes of the, in our city. This event is special to the city. You know, the city of Liverpool is very proud of what they are as a football community, and I think that expands out to the community as a whole. So the run for the 97 is growing every year. So again, it always seems to be a nice day. Sun's always shining. People to do the run, do it as a walk. Family members come. There's, there's been several here again today. Um, it's just, just again, I'd like to say, to just keep the memory of the 97 going. And it's such a gorgeous day, and it's lovely to see all different families mixing together, enjoying themselves. Evertonians, Liverpudlians, some from Tranmere, you know, and it's just lovely. The, the people have come out after 34 years. Again, it just shows, as a, you know, the, the true community spirit can achieve anything. And I feel much better today for seeing that. We've still got support after all these years. Steve Kelly, uh, Earl, and some of the other activists there as well, taking around the Hillsborough uh, Law Now banner, uh, just to show people that that this, this is the next stage of the fight. And we've got the backing from the local government here, the mayor, and everybody who's involved in the run for the 97 is pushing for Hillsborough Law. Behind me, you'll see that there are people running for the 97. And obviously this is the germane of what we've been trying to do to ensure that the Hillsborough Law is enacted by Parliament. Hillsborough Law's not trying to get justice for the Hillsborough 97, it's for anybody else now in any other, shall we say, disaster or anything that happens. For, for the people that are fighting against the government, police, ambulance services, whatever it is, and that they can access legal services, have possibly a public advocate to speak on their behalf, and more importantly, the authorities will not be able to hide, hide behind a no comment uh, type of defence. If we had a Hillsborough law now, if it was enacted and enshrined in legislation, it would mean, for instance, that those public authorities, like the police, have to tell the truth. They have to disclose all information. There would be somebody to support families through the disaster and the tragedy that they're going through, but also to explain to them what the process is and what happens next. And then, of course, there's loads of things around public bodies having very deep pockets and the enormity of the, uh, the, the amount of money that they can throw at something to defend it, whilst families have to scuttle around trying to collect as much money as they possibly can. We had to raise funds to fight where, we, where we've got today. And without raising them funds, we could never have achieved what we've achieved. The Hillsborough families had to go out against the establishment, against the media, for the families to be able to get the same amount of help from government as the perpetrators get. And I will say the perpetrators, because I've always said the perpetrators get more justice than what victims do. Believe it or not, in, in this country, we don't have what's called a duty of candour, and that, therefore, the likes of the police are not forced to tell the truth at the first opportunity. And we saw with Hillsborough that that misinformation, um, those lies, those smears, they go round the world very, very quickly, and then it's almost impossible to ensure that the truth comes out. Because denial is, is, is the thing that kept Hillsborough going for so long. The police denied any wrongdoing, the government's denied any wrongdoing, and we all know through this 35-year fight that was not the case. So the Hillsborough law can bring these people to account earlier to save families suffering. My dad uh, was a Hillsborough survivor, and I used to do this run every year with him, and sadly I lost him um, April last year. So I've kept going, and that's sort of... I've still got his little nickname on my number, um, and my little tops from last year that are for him. The Hillsborough law, to 
the seeing what my dad went through and all the, the suffering that he had and I know he'd had the issues with his, his statement being changed and things and obviously the way that they all got treated. I saw him fight for years, all of my childhood it was my dad fighting for justice and it would mean a lot to be able to stop families having to go through something like that in the future. A hill for all, we've got like, a, what you call a public advocate, that they are going to give a, a but, but Marie Regal fought so hard for that public advocate, but it's not going far enough. The public advocate does not go far enough. But it's about ensuring that no one else has to go through what Hillsborough families, what the likes of the Manchester bombing, and of course the families of Grenfell are currently having to go through. There's a, there's a young family down in London uh, who, who lost their young son, Zayn, through toxic poisoning. His father, Kai, who's ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. His mother, Nicole, was in a coma for three months. You know, these people are now joining this ever-growing family of people uh, that have been abused by the system, by a, a wealthy, rich system that can afford to, to put these things on back burners for many, many years. This has got to end, and the Hillsborough law can do that. Why the Hillsborough law is so important for the ordinary people of this country, people keep thinking it's about Hillsborough families. It's not about Hillsborough families. It's gonna be a Hillsborough law, and hopefully that will be a legacy of the 97. Yes, so the Hillsborough to Anfield team was established from a group of people having their own experiences. Uh, of the Hillsborough incident and it, it brought them all together as a group to form something special really to try and take forward this push to enforce the Hillsborough law. Uh, we're looking for this law to be imposed to support every single victim up and down the country and that vic those victims are looking for the truth, they're looking for everything to be out in the open and to give support to those that need it most. We've got to demand it. People, ordinary people have got to demand it for their good, the good of their children, the good of their child, grandchildren. In fact, for the good of this nation. And we can make changes if we never, ever give up. 13th of April, going to be running from Anfield to Hillsborough and then down to uh, Grenfell Tower in London to raise awareness uh, for the need for the Hillsborough law. But it's basically making sure when something terrible happens, when people lose their lives, that the survivors and the families are not starting off that fight to try and get justice and truth with one hand tied behind the back while they're still traumatised. The Hillsborough law, it's be a legacy for uh, all of the families here who've gone through so much over the last uh, 35 years. and leaving the country in a better place legally and for social justice as well. It's pretty prominent in this city to say you'll never walk alone and I think that carries out for everybody in the UK. If everybody remembers that you'll never walk alone, we'll all be stronger. And I hope that, you know, other communities can look it upon us and think, well, if they can do it, we can do it because we can only achieve things together.